In this Blender tutorial, I'll show you how to texture paint dirt or grunge on a model using Blender's texture painting. So in this tutorial, I'll be using this traffic cone 3D model that I created, and we'll be texture painting some dirt and grunge on the model to make it look more realistic. And I'll have a free download of the project files linked in the description on my Gumroad store and Patreon page, so if you want to download the project files, then you can follow along with this tutorial and use the same blend file. So in the project files, you'll get this startup file, which you can use to follow along in the video, and you'll also get the finished blender file with the texture painting, and you'll also get the different dirt maps and grunge maps that I'll be using in this video. And if you are downloading on my Gumroad store, if you'd like to send me a little tip to help support the channel, you can throw in a dollar or two into the price box before downloading, and that's a great way to help support this channel. Now using a drawing tablet is optional, but I am going to be using this Wacom Pad tablet that I have for the texture painting, and I'm also going to have some affiliate links to some drawing tablets on Amazon if you're interested in purchasing a tablet. So you can follow along with the project files linked in the description, or you can do this in your own Blender file. So the first thing that I want to do is create a new UV map, which is going to be just the UV map for the dirt and grunge. Because for example, on this model here, I have a texture and it's using the UV coordinate. And I might be adding this onto another model, which already has, for example, like a metal texture or something. So we're going to be creating a separate UV map so it doesn't interfere with the other UV map that we're already using. So what you can do is click over here to go to the UV editing workspace, and I'm just going to select everything and go into edit mode. So here's the current UV map on the model. But to create a separate UV map, you want to click right here on the object data properties, and then you want to open up the UV maps tab. Then we're going to click on the plus here to create a new UV map. I'll double click on this to rename it, and I'll just call it dirt UV map. So now if we click here on the camera icon, we can preview each UV map. Now also if you scroll right over here in the UV editor, you can click here and you can preview the different UV maps. So just make sure you click on the dirt UV map, and I also just want to click on here just to preview it for now. Now I want to UV unwrap this so that we can texture paint it, and for texture painting we want to make sure that there aren't any overlapping UV islands so it texture paints correctly. So I'm just going to select everything, this will depend on your model, but for my model here, for the traffic cone, I'm just going to use the smart UV project because that's a really easy way to set it up so there isn't any overlap. So I'll just select everything and I'll hit U and I'm going to click on unwrap and I'm going to do the smart UV project. Then here on the island margin, I can type in just like a 0 0.01 and that way there's going to be some space in between the islands and I'll click on unwrap. So now you can see it's unwrapped like the bottom parts and kind of the cylinder parts. And you can see if I zoom in here, there's a little bit of space in between the islands. So when we texture paint this, there won't be any issues with the overlapping. So now that I've unwrapped the dirt UV map, I can just preview this UV map again. And I'm going to click right here to preview the original UV map. So let's now click right over here to go to the shading workspace. And if I click right here on the materials, I have two different materials. So what I want to do now is add in the image texture, but I want to add in the same image texture into both materials. And that way when I texture paint over this model, the dirt is going to show up on both materials. So I'm using multiple materials for this example so that if you have a model with multiple materials and you want to texture paint over both of them, you can set it up in both of the materials. So first I'm going to click on the orange material here, and then I'll go to the add menu and I'm going to search for an image texture. We'll just drop it right here and then I'll click on new to create a new image texture. So then here on the name I can just call it dirt or whatever you want to call it. Here on the width and height I'm going to make this 4096 by 4096. That's the standard resolution for a 4k texture but of course you can change this to whatever resolution you want. And then here on the color I want to make sure this is fully white. So the image is going to be fully white and then we're going to texture paint black on the model and wherever it's black that's where the dirt is going to show up. So I'll now click on new image. Now I want to make sure this image texture is using the new UV map we created. So I'll go to the add menu and I'm going to search for the UV map node. We can plug the UV into the vector and then if I click here I can choose the dirt UV. That way we are making sure it's using the new UV map that we created. So now I want to use this texture to make some parts be kind of like a dark brown and other parts to be orange. So to do this we're going to go to the add menu and we're going to search for a mix color. We'll drop it here and the color is going to go into the factor. That way as we paint it's going to tell it what parts are going to be color A and what parts are going to be color B. So for color B here I'm going to click and drag and drop the orange traffic cone color here into color B and then for color A I'm going to make this a very dark brown color. So now if I put the mix result into the base color here, you can see it still looks orange. That's because we put the orange one to the bottom one. So then as we paint a dark color, that's going to show up as color A. Now I also want to add this to the other material so that when we paint over this shiny part, it's also going to show the dirt. 
So what I'm gonna do is select the dirt and shift select the UV map and I'll press control C to copy both of these nodes. I'm now gonna click here on the silver material and I'll press control V to paste the nodes. Now I also wanna make sure that this Voronoi texture, which is UV mapped and it's kind of making that cool silver texture there, I wanna make sure that it's using the old UV map. So I'll select the UV map node and I'll duplicate it and stick it here and I can delete this. And if I click here on the dropdown, I'll choose the original UV map. And now the UV can go into the vector and I can just delete the texture coordinate. So we're just making sure and confirming that we're using the correct UV map. So if I control shift select the color here, you can see here's the base color, but I want to add the dirt into the base color. So let's drag the principal shader back here and I'll again go to the add menu and I'm going to search for a mix color and I'll drop it here. Now if I click back on the orange color, I can click here on color A and press control C to copy the color. Click here on the silver again and right here, let's unplug this and I want to press control V here to paste the same really dark brown color here into color A so it's the same dirt color. So now this color here can go into color B and so this is that Voronoi, but then this dirt here, that we can put into the factor. So now the result can go into the base color and I'll control shift select the principal shader. So I'll just save the file again and let's click right over here to go to the texture painting mode. So I'm just going to close this here so we have a bit more space. Now what I'm going to do is click here to go to the paint soft brush because this will be a good brush for painting the grunge and dirt. Now, if I wanted to duplicate the brush and make my own custom brush, I could click right here and click on duplicate asset, but I actually don't want to do this because if I duplicate the asset, it's going to save it as an actual asset brush. And so then it's going to be in other Blender projects. So I'm instead just going to change the settings of the paint soft brush to be our textured brush. So I'm going to click here on the color and I'm going to make this color fully white. So I'll turn the red, green, and blue all the way to one. So it's fully white. Now I just want to add the dark values of the texture, so I'm going to click on the blend right here and I'm going to change it to darken so it'll just add the dark values. So I now want to add a texture, so if I scroll down here I can go to the texture, let's click on new to add a new texture, so click on new, and then if I click on this button here that's going to take us over to the texturing panel. Now later in the video I'll be showing you how to add in like some grunge texture maps to texture paint on the model, but for now I'm just going to start by using Blender's procedural clouds texture. So if we click on the type here, let's change it to clouds, and and this is basically Blender's procedural noise texture. And then there's also some other things you can change like the depth, maybe I'll turn up the depth a bit so it's a bit higher detail. And then I can also like change the size and there's some other settings you can play around with but I'll leave most of the settings how they are. So I'm now gonna click back here to go to the active tool and workspace settings and we'll scroll down here. And if I click here, you can see we now have that noise texture. Now, if I hit the F key to make my brush bigger, I'm now gonna start to paint. So I'm gonna be using my drawing tablet, this Wacom pad tablet. And again, if you're interested in purchasing this tablet or another similar tablet, I will have some Amazon affiliate links in the description to some tablets I recommend. So using my drawing tablet, I'm just going to start to paint along here and you can see it's going to start to paint that dirt texture there. And so this is working because if I open up the side panel here, let me just zoom in here, you can see here's what we've painted. So we've kind of painted this darkness here. So if I go over here to the shading workspace, here is the image and the image is going to the factor. So wherever we're painting, that's telling it to use color A, which is this really dark color. So I'll go back to the texture painting mode. Now, as I paint here, you can see that the texture is looking like exactly the same. So what I want to do is click here on the mapping and I want to change this to random. This way, when I kind of paint along here, each time I paint down and click or draw, it's going to be more random. Now let's just close this here so we have a bit more space. I can also turn the brush strength down just by dragging that strength there. And now I can just paint here and it's going to be a little bit more subtle. So I'm just going to start to go along here and I'm just going to paint here kind of in the cracks and corners just along there, just kind of paint where it makes sense. Also, I'd recommend looking up some images online of some dirty traffic cones or whatever object you're painting just to kind of make it look more realistic. So I'm gonna paint some dirt right here to kind of make it look like some dirt has accumulated there right there in the cracks. I can also go along here and I can just paint like a little bit of dirt there. So there's just some dirt here, which is just collected there on the side of the model. Now I can also change the size if I don't like the size of the texture. So if I go right down here to the texture size, I can click and then drag down to select all the values. And then I can drag back and forth and I'm just gonna make it like a 0.5 instead of one. So now if I paint this, you can see the texture is only half the size and I do like that a little bit better. Now if I click here to change the color and make the color fully black, I can paint some really dark smudges here, but you can see the texture isn't going to show up. So if you want to paint the texture, make sure you're using fully white. But if you just want to add like some little dark smudges and stuff here and there, or just kind of add some little dark areas, you could just turn it fully black and just paint some little dark areas. But I'm going to change this back to fully white. 
Now as well as painting with the procedural texture here, you can also click here to go to the texturing panel and you can choose anything else. So for example, you could choose like the magic texture and that kind of does look cool. It does look like a little bit of smudges. You could also choose some other ones here, maybe try using like the marble one. That might be kind of interesting. But as well as using these procedural textures, I'm gonna show you how to add in an external image texture. So to do this, we're gonna change the type here to image or movie. Then we'll click on open to open up a texture. Now the textures that I'll be using are some free textures that I downloaded from some different free texture websites. So if you want to download them from the original website, I'll have the links in the description. Or if you download the project files of this tutorial, then you'll get a few different texture maps which you can use in this tutorial to follow along. So I'm first going to go here into this folder and I'm going to be using this metal 053. Now instead of using all these other textures, I want to use the metalness one because the metalness one is white, but then where the rust is, it's black. So I'll click on this one and then click on open image. So we've now added in that image. So we can now click back here to go to the active tool and workspace settings and if I click here you can see it's going to update and then of course I'm going to set the mapping to random you can change the size if you want to so this is really cool now I can go along here and I can just paint some little bits of grunge using this image here. Now another cool thing you could do is you could click on the mapping here and you could change it to stencil instead. Now if I hover my mouse over here, you can see it's gonna be added as a stencil. So I'll just be using my mouse for this. I'm not gonna use my drawing tablet for the stencil. So if I control right click, that's gonna rotate. If I shift right click, that's gonna scale. And then if I just right click and drag, that's gonna move the stencil. And I can just click along here and I can use my pen or I can just use my mouse here and I can just kind of paint the grunge. So now if I move around here, you can see there is the grunge showing up on the model. So you can use stencil if you want to. I'm gonna change this back to random because I kind of like that better, but the stencil can be really useful. So let's add a few more textures. So I'm gonna click right here to go back to the texturing panel. And let's now click on this button here on the source, click on that file icon to add a new texture. This time I'm going to be using this Metal 054B, and this one has some cool scratches. So again, I'll use the metalness map because it's white and then the scratches are black. So I'll open this up, and for this again, I'm going to use my drawing tablet. So I can kind of go along here and just paint along, and we're going to add like some little scratches and things. Now I want to make those scratches bigger, so if I go back up here to the active tool and workspace settings, let's just change the size here. So maybe I'll just drag the size down to a pretty small value, make my brush a little bit bigger. And now if I just paint this along the traffic cone, you can see it looks like we have some little smudges or scratches. Maybe also if I go down here, kind of paint some more scratches right down here, maybe a few scratches here on the side, and then I'm gonna add another image texture. So let's click back here to go to the texturing panel, and I'll click here to choose another one. This time I'm gonna be using the smear surface imperfection, and for this one I'll be using this roughness map because it's white and black. So I'll browse image, and now I can go along here and just add like some little smears and smudges. So this is really cool and it adds so much detail and realism to a model. Let's also add one more. So I'll again click on the file icon. And then for this one, I'm gonna use the Surface Imperfection 014. And for this one, I'm gonna be using the Opacity Map because it's white and black and I'll browse this image. It just looks kind of noisy, but it's a little bit more detailed, kind of some detailed noise. So maybe let's go along here and kind of in the cracks and crevices here, maybe dirt has been accumulating right down there in the corner. So I can go along there. I could also go along here on the edges and just add little bits of dirt here on the edge. Now once you're finished, it's very important to save the image texture because if you don't save the image texture, Blender's not going to save it, so you'll lose the data. So open up the image texture here and click on image and then save as. And I'm just going to save it in my project files. I'll rename it to dirt as a PNG image, or you can save it as a JPEG and just click on save image. So we'll go back over here to the shading workspace. Let's go into the rendered viewport mode. You can see there's all of our dirt and grunge there on the model. Now there's one more thing I want to show you, and that is that you can add the dirt texture into the roughness so that where the dirt is, it's going to be more rough, but then the rest of it will be more shiny and reflective. So first let's click on the orange one, and I'm going to be plugging this into the orange material. So what I can do is take the dirt color and we can put it into the roughness to control how rough and shiny it is. So now what I want to do is just make it so where the dirt is, it's more rough. So what I'll do is go to the add menu and we can add a color ramp to adjust the colors. So I'll put the color ramp right here and now I can drag the black tab around and the white tab around and first I'll make it really contrasty so you can kind of see what it's doing. So you can see right now where the dirt is, it's like looking really shiny, but then it's more rough over here. So what I want to do is actually flip these two colors. So flip the colors. Now you can see the rest of it is shiny, but then where the dirt is, it's more rough. So I can kind of drag these 
around to change the contrast, and then I can also drag the colors. So if I make the colors lighter, it's going to be more rough, but I want this to be a shiny traffic cone. So I'll drag this down and kind of make it a pretty dark color, maybe just like a dark gray. So you can see the traffic cone now, the plastic is a little bit shiny. Then for this color here, if I turn this down, that is going to adjust the shininess of the dirt. So I'll turn it up to fully white, so the dirt is going to be pretty rough, but then the rest of the traffic cone will be more shiny. So we can do the same thing for the other material. So I'll click on the silver material. Let's close this, and I can take the dirt color, and we can put that into the roughness. But then to control the roughness values, I'm going to search for a color ramp, and we'll put it here between the dirt texture and the roughness. Just stick it down here. Let's just navigate over here just to kind of see what that's looking like. So again, if I take this white color and turn it down, everything's going to be really shiny. So I'm going to turn this up so it's kind of kind of a, just like a light gray, something like that. And then for this black color here, if I turn this up, you can see that's going to change the dirt roughness. So I'll make this fully white so that it's really rough here, just where the dirt is. But then the rest of it is going to be a bit shiny. And actually, I might turn this down a little bit more so it's a little bit more shiny. So that's how you can texture paint grunge and dirt to your models to make Make your models look a lot more realistic and a lot more detailed. So I hope you found the video helpful and thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy my videos and you'd like to help support me and this channel, then some great ways to do that are by checking out my Gumroad store and Patreon page where you can get lots of Blender content and help support the channel. But I hope you found this helpful and thank you for watching.